But what if there are none? What if heaven is an illusion or God is a man-made idea kept to oppress our mind? Hell is an illusion and the devil is a man-made idea kept to keep the world at peace. Either way, I wait, believing in the illusion. If is, could be, or doesn't exist at all, what a blasphemy that would be. I am Tyler Elder Chuckles Online, and I will be your angel of death in this terrifying tale. We are Vorpal Tales, and we have a variety of terrifying tales and awesome adventures we play every day of the week, most days twice a day. Go to our website, vorpaltales.com, for the calendar, and to get recaps of past episodes, access all our social media, links to our archives of previous shows at youtube.com slash c slash vorpaltales, uh, and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell while you're there. Also, follow on Twitch if you've not already. Special thanks tonight to Helmgas for making a great game and allowing us to use the Divinity. Uh, I almost did it again, Steve. I entirely blame you for this. <laughs> uh, Cult Divinity Lost original soundtrack, which you can buy by going to helmgas.bandcamp.com or webshop.helmgas.se. For music, thanks to Roll20, myself, Darren Curtis, Ghost Stories Incorporated, and Somnium Music, Doom Seekers of Enlightenment. Tell everyone who you are and who you're doomed and or protagonist in this tale. Hey everybody, I am Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they, whatever pops into your head first. And you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, cause it me, Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. And tonight I will be reprising my role as Benny with some new props that I've made for you all. Hello everybody, my name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, and tonight I would You're Billy tonight. <clears throat> tonight I will be playing Billy, uh, the priest who uh, is refusing to confess, if I remember where we left off, mostly. Kind of. Maybe even more than that. It's been a while. You may or may not be in a multi-story apartment building looking for body pieces. We had to do the body pieces. I was in the bathroom and I did the summoning and we did an angel and we did a whole thing. Mm, dang. Nailed it. I don't know. Recap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Tonight I will be playing our descendant character, uh, Garnet. Hello, my name is Rachel. I am stolen fires pretty much everywhere. And tonight I will be playing Safira, uh, the uh, ex mafia woman who uh, has an interesting relationship with shovels. And I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. And tonight I will be playing Seeker of Truth, Thomas Anderson. Hi, I am Rosie, regular size mom, and tonight I am playing Sin Barrow the Cursed. Excellent. Benny, you know what time it is. Before Denver can say anything after the bottle lands on him, the door swings open and four figures enter the room. They are 
living sculptures of physical suffering and torture. You called us and we came. What do you want? Safira asks what's going on, which earns her a trip across the room at high velocity. They say they're from another reality and have been called and are here to free us. Despite what some of us suspect, Eleanor didn't summon these creatures. Safira and Sin seem to be taking the blame for this one. Safira asks Billy Wayne if he can do some bell, book, and candle bullshit to get rid of them. But they're not demons. They call themselves purgatives. Billy Wayne asks them to return to purgatory. But they say that's where they are. All this while, one of them slowly strangles Thomas Anderson. One of us is missing, they point out. Not Eleanor, who is still staying away. They mention Randy and immediately seem to realize we can't remember anything. Everything goes black. Shift to Eleanor and Sid. Eleanor says she's waiting for the others to either figure everything out or die. That's when a writing shadow floats into the room. There you are, darling. I've been looking for you for ages. It claims to be the entity who taught Eleanor magic. It comments something odd about Denver's soul. It's somehow the key to either doom or freedom. Then things go back. They come to having their present day minds in their teenage selves. They're at a funeral. It's a fairly elaborate Egyptian themed affair. Looking around, their parents are there, looking at them with such delicious sadness. Inside the coffin is their friend, tall, pale, and gaunt. He lays in the coffin, and there's a strange tension in the air. Sophia looks around for any sort of placard or program that might shed more light on the situation. She hears a whisper from Bennett, one of the torture sculptures, that today is her fault. He encourages her to embrace today. Safira walks up to the coffin, hoping to trigger a memory. Nothing. It was a nice try, though. Sin is next to her, trying desperately to avoid her own family. Do you remember any of this? Safira asks. Sin does not. Billy Wayne, meanwhile, is trying to take in the entire scenario. Two people in particular are glaring daggers at them while Thomas cries. Billy Wayne does his best to comfort Thomas, 
while Eleanor checks her phone and sees she's been in a group chat with the other parents. They seem especially upset that Safira is here. Aren't we all? But something about Safira's parents' status means she has to be there, and everyone has to deal. Thomas looks around and sees that Brandy's father seems on the verge of doing violence to Safira. Eleanor also picks up on this and tries to interpose herself between the two people. She looks at the body and sees it's in pieces. If she can put it together, that might be the way out. Sin is the way through all this. Eleanor walks up to Safira and mentions that all the memories in this room are about to attack her. While she speaks, she hears Benny in her head urging her to touch the body. Safira, confused and scared, has an outburst in which she seems to be speaking to both of them. Talk down to me one more time, she yells. Eleanor responds violently and throws Safira to the ground. The other parents seem pleased, if anything, watching Eleanor bully Safira. They get into an argument, which Billy Wayne intervenes in. He calms Safira down just enough to get her to stalk off and sulk in the back of the room. You. Poor dear. Meanwhile, Sin has been eagerly examining the body. Quite morbid, aren't you? It appears to have been beaten to death with a shovel and has been rather well reconstructed. As she studies the body, Eleanor explains that they're fucked without Denver here. But they have to try and piece things back together. Sin asks, metaphorically. Don't you wish? The scene changes again. We're in an apartment, not wearing funeral clothes, but somehow still in that same mindset. A funeral program is on the table for Randy, dated November 11th, 1999. Everything about the room screams late 90s. From the clothes, to the food, to the scattered condoms, liquor bottles, and even the used pregnancy test. There are also typewritten notes to all of them from Randy. They say the same. Thing. Have a little slice of hell on me. Home, sweet home, purrs Benny in their heads as he steps out of the wall. Eleanor wants to know what he's doing. Benny encourages them to explore the neighborhood. He hints about whatever Sophia did about her rage. Eleanor makes a comment about Safira becoming a murderer at the young age of 17. But Safira straight up admits to having killed a lot of people and feeling guilt over none of them. In the meanwhile, Billy has slipped away into the bathroom with his letter. He unpockets some of his religious paraphernalia, positioning them around the sink. Mm -hmm. Funny, you think your faith can save you. He focuses on the letter, 
praying for some kind of deliverance. As he prays, he cuts his hand on the sink and draws a cross in blood on the bathroom mirror. Not very Christ-like, is it, Billy? The room begins shaking, a high-pitched sound getting so intense it even makes his ears bleed a little. I wouldn't know what that's like. The light bulb explodes, and that's when Billy Wayne sees the angel descending. A six-winged, bleeding monstrosity. You called, child. You again, says Billy Wayne. Of course, I am never far from you. Billy Wayne asks for guidance. He's stuck here and wants to go home. The angel says they must reunite that which was torn apart, both physically and spiritually. They are being denied their full memories to protect their own sanity. They'll have to solve the puzzle and oh, do I love puzzles. And then something about necromancers not being the only magicians attempting to escape their flesh prison. It reaches out to Billy Wayne and returns some of his memories. Billy Wayne remembers performing rituals like this, but far more elaborate. And they work. And that's why Billy Wayne needs so much money, as he has chosen an expensive path. But he can summon angels whenever he wants to apparently. Mm -hmm. Safira moves through the room, touching everything in it and hoping it triggers some kind of new memory for her. She finds a note inside an empty liquor bottle and slices her hand open. Dearest Safira, fuck you. But would you be a dear and ask the cannibals in 16 for my hand? The others are concerned, but Safira says she's going to look for Unit 16. This is exactly when Billy Wayne emerges and says he has had a vision. He relates his insight that we have to put together that which was destroyed. It occurs to Thomas to look for more notes. They're all around the apartment. Please find my heart amongst the refuse of the boiler room. Could you go visit the cannibals in number 16 and ask them for my hand? In apartment number 34, there is a phone which you can make one outside call from. Could you give the parents the final message from their son? It's on the fridge. Could you bring a lit candle out to the mists? I can hear a child crying, looking for her way back. Gertrude Isbeck's husband recently died. Could you visit her and sit with her even for a little while? The teen mother in apartment number 13 has overdosed on pills. Please save her. Thomas goes to the fridge while Billy Wayne mentions that Bennett is nephrite. That freaks Sophia out for reasons she can't describe, and she wants to immediately leave. But as soon as she opens the door, Benny is there. Safira wanting to leave provokes another argument as other members of the group don't think we should split up. But Eleanor has no intention of leaving her spot on the couch. 
However, Benny isn't going to let them leave if they're not together. That's when the figure in the white robe, Randy, arrives. He glides into the room, his eyes full of heat for Saphira. I wonder why. Saphira says something about not remembering killing him, but at least he has a headstone. How nice. It blinks in and out of existence, touching each of us in turn. His touch feels like death. It's trying to get Benny to communicate on its behalf. That's about when Eleanor begins withering in front of their eyes, and her eyes go white. She says something about her real self having them, and then begins raging out. She picks up one of the shattered bottles and attacks Thomas. You are mine here, and you are mine back there. She says, perfect splendid. She then throws another bottle at Sin. Saphira tries tackling Eleanor, but gets swatted away. It seems like Randy has possessed her. Meanwhile, Billy Wayne is going through the cabinets. He's looking for salt, with which he attempts an exorcism. How quaint. One extended discussion about magic later. Billy Wayne drives Randy out of Eleanor and it lunges for Saphira before discorporating. Lucky. What exactly did you do? Asks Thomas in shock as Benny applauds them. That's when the pressure drops and we all experience the worst headache of our lives. Billy Wayne rounds on Benny, convincing him to return to the shadows. It works, and he turns his attention to making sure Eleanor is okay. He speaks very gently to her, asking for her help. Eleanor responds by whispering that she could care less about him. But she'll do the bare minimum to help. Isn't that sweet? After some brief medical care, Saphira leads the rest of the group to whatever waits for them in apartment 16. I do hope it's not absolutely mind-rending terror. Thanks, Fork. A great time. Okay. Now you're fired. I'm going to make some of that silver pop off his face if it kills me. All right. So <laughs> when the scene opens, you will be heading towards the cannibals because that's the choice you made. the correct choice we made a choice yes it is a choice i'm waiting for a book to load so hold on uh the only thing you can see through any of the windows in the hallways of the uh, apartment complex is a very dingy old unmaintained parking lot lots of cracks potholes uneven pavement uh, fenced around the edges you can't see beyond the fence because uh, about 10 yards before the fence log starts rolling in it gets thicker and thicker until it hits the fence beyond the fence just disappears into mist and ultimate blackness the fence is old chain link bent to the top wobbles in it rusted in places got holes in it 
Uh, the side of the apartment you're walking across is letting you see only obviously down one side. It looks like you're three or four stories up. There's no cars in the parking lot. There is a dumpster seriously overloaded with trash. Like it's been piling up for months. Rats are scurrying through it. Really, really big fucking rats. The hallway is lit by fluorescent lights. The ones that are solid are dim. The rest just flicker. Gives you a headache. Some of them are just out completely. It smells like moldy carpet, cockroach shit. Those of you from hot states know what that is like. Uh, apartments that haven't been cleaned in a long time and uh, rotting wood. The floor has got bumps in it. It's got runner carpet down it and then old fake wood tile that's popping up and bent and weather warped as water damage. It's pleasant. That's where you're at. You can have a scene for a minute because it takes a minute to walk down the hallway. Uh, you're passing apartments, but none of them have knockers, door handles, or numbers on them. So you're assuming when you find one that has the knocker, door handle, or number, that's probably where you're going. Uh, uh, Safira doesn't say anything. She's just very focused and determined. She wants to get these things to where they need to be so she can get free. Uh, while Garnet's taking up the back, um, since we're in our teenage bodies, she's gonna be, like, patting herself down to see if there's, like, anything else in there. Like a pamphlet or a ticket or anything. From, like, her clothes from that day. Uh, we'll see through the illusion. No modifiers? Nope. No modifiers except whatever your normal ones are. Okay. Uh, success with complications. Okay. Uh... handful of broken glass safety glass like little tiny pieces the kind that can't cut you but they're like little hard balls like, when like that you would get quite from thoroughly. like a car like broken if you windshield, shattered yeah. a broken windshield or a... interesting okay you pull them out of your pocket and uh they make that noise of glass when you roll them through your hand and a couple pieces hit the fake wooden tile and break or bounce and make that noise. Everyone inadvertently glances over. Benny, or I'm sorry, Benny, Thomas and Sin and uh, Steve's character whose name is Steve. Billy. 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 Oh, let me fix that. Along with Garnet, you all see broken safety glass with old blood and bits of uh, dirty blonde hair on it. Safira, you only see the safety glass. I mean, uh, I imagine Safira is at the front and if uh, Eleanor is near the back, she's not glancing back. <laughs> I'm all the way at the back. Where, who of us <laughs> have dirty blonde hair? Oh, no, even though you're at the front, your head turns anyways, because this is the purgatory doing this. For Safira. I don't. None of you have this color of dirty blonde hair. It's familiar to all of you, except Safira. Is it Brandy's color of hair? Could be. He was wearing a ball cap in your flashback and it was cut short. Could be, though. I found it in my pocket. 
You say that out loud, Thomas. It's that Randy's hair. Yeah. To fear what hair? The, the hair in the glass. With the blood. She like holds her hand out and like she'll clo close some of the distance from the back of the group. All right, you've got a handful of glass. Good for you. You can't see it, Safira. There's Randy's hair all in the glass. Do you cool. feel I'm... that badly for what you did that you're blocking it out? I feel like I'm done being fucked with. Thank you very much. And Safira will continue walking. We'll see through the illusion, Safira. Okay. Let me click over to my character sheet. Fail. Okay. You have a sudden flashback of a weird game that started when you were seven or eight. Uh, it was just the six of you, plus yourselves, so Thomas and Sin and Billy and Garnet and uh, not Benny and Steve's dead character. And uh, it had been that way since preschool. That's when you started being friends because you were all at an exclusive pre preschool for reasons you can't remember. And then one day, uh, Thomas and Sin and Billy started this really weird game that the others picked up on real quick but you never quite understood where they brought their new friend randy over and it was an imaginary friend but they treated randy like he was a real person like they could see and interact with him you just kind of went along with it even though it's a weird fucking game you never actually saw randy though because it's imaginary kind of annoyed you but whatever they were your friends okay Uh, so, uh, Sephira will then say, oh, oh, is this, like, Randy again? What do you... What do you mean, Sephira? Could be. I mean that as much as you like talking to me like I'm a child, I have, in fact, left childhood games behind. This isn't a game. No, it's not. We're in hell. Can we keep going? Fine. Sure. Keep going. While um, all of this is happening, we're in a hallway with a bunch of doors. You said that none of them had numbers or like the little door um, knockers. Um, or handles. There's no handles? Alright. You can tell they're doors because the hinges in the shape, but there's just no way to open them. Um, based apart like you would expect for two bedroom apartments yeah I'm gonna you know if they're approaching apartment 16 is where you're going right mm -hmm. hopefully yep. that's the plan so while they're making their way towards 16 can I just kind of stay back and try to push one open see what happens or we'll see through the illusion <laughs> Billy, 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 what are you up to? Uh, 16 total for a total success. Um, it swings open just a black void but you feel like if you stare long enough you'll be able to see through it perhaps Billy you should just jump in
Especially since you seem intent on slowing your friends down from escaping. There's... something there's something in there I can tell something just beyond where we can see if we look further we look with the right eyes I know that we can see you and I'll, I'll look to Benny you see things, right? I see many, many things. Such sights. Then show me what I can see through this door. There's got to be something. And I'm trying to use my... I'm going to be very clear here. Uh, I've got just out the freaking wazoo over here. Charismatic aura, forked tongue, and intuitions and magics. I am trying to convince Benny to close this door. I'm going to push his ass through and close it. So, describe Billy's ideal church. Should you have succeed at all your dreams? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> ideal church. Oh man. Uh, hold on. It's the Mormon spaceship in Expanse. <laughs> Yeah, no. The Navu, Nava, Navu, no, the Navu. All right. My ideal church would be just the most ugh church you could possibly imagine. Um, you know, let's go big or go home. Um, the cr Looking, I'm, I'm looking it so, up right now just to make sure that I've got this number right because this is what I thought it was. Um, so the biggest up, church right now. Oh, go ahead, Rachel. Look up Crystal Cathedral. It's a local mega church. So I, so garish. So I had looked up mega churches before um, for this character, and the biggest one right now holds just under forty five thousand um, people. Uh, um. So uh, I'm I'm shooting for fifty. Uh, so my <laughs> mine is a fifty thousand seat auditorium with just every horrendous you know modern mega church staple you can think of, and it honestly beyond that it doesn't matter to Billy. It's just the people in the building and all the extras, bells and whistles, what those specifically are is less important than that they are there. So it's just flashing lights and risers up on the stages and sections where people get drawn into these different sort of little little mini shows as, you know, the main one goes on. Just, you know, all that stuff. So just a mass and sea of people just all being whipped up into a frenzy. Go to shove Benny through the door. He wheels around and smiles at you as he pinwheels backwards slightly and as he passes the barrier it explodes like fog in the sun and you see this and he morphs into an usher He's standing in front of the doors which are swinging shut slowly enough that you can see all of this and you can see a guy at the pulpit delivering a sermon dressed in your ideal suit choose a relation cousin, brother, uncle, doesn't matter, but the first okay. connection, relation. Uh, uh, let's go with... One you hate. Uh... Let's go with... <laughs> let's just go with uncle. Um, but, like, not like a real uncle, but, like, 
that guy in the family that's your uncle, but you're not quite sure who he actually is. That guy. One moment. Who are you again? What? Give give Benny a moment. Oh. I'm sorry, sir, but it looks like you can't come in. You don't belong here. You've been excommunicated. No, I believe you're mistaken. I am. I'm Billy Wayne Grant. I am delivering the keynote here today. This is my church, so go ahead and go back. You. No, no, I'm afraid not. You see, I can't let you in. That's all right, though. Your uncle is taking good care of your fortune. <clears throat> He's much more charming and charismatic, and his lies simply were much more delicious than yours. You can look, but please don't touch. I'm afraid your hands are unworthy. Oh no, my hands are plenty worthy. And I'm sure that you'll find my words are more than capable of getting what I want. And you are making more mistakes than you think. I know what this is, and I know what you're doing. Here. Let's try something. Uh, give me one second. I'm looking for... That's okay, because this... this is a dramatic way to switch scenes for a second. Okay. To the rest of you, you hear Billy say there's something just across this doorway. You all turn and look. He steps through the door slam shut. Leaving him in his own purgatory. The hell? What a shame. It looks like your friend has deserted you all. Well, it's probably why you were telling us to stay together. I can't help but think that you had something to do with it. Me? No. Oh. Little face guy. Oh, I'm just the voice in your head. Is. Benny corporeal right now? Or is he just a, a voice? When he's speaking to the group, he's corporeal. When it's a specific person, like if you're in a scene and Benny says something that applies only to you, it's in your head. Okay. <laughs> so, he's, so he's here right now since he's talking to all of us. Yeah, the door slams okay. shut and he's the one pulling it shut when you turn around. I didn't clarify that, sorry. Uh. So you did have something to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that, that, that's a, a big like... difference. <laughs> so that's weird. Why would he tell you to stay together and then allow Billy to be separated? Well, get him out. I'm, I'm, you said you were summoned to help us escape. Get him out. But Sin, that doesn't make any sense. These creatures aren't helpful. Have you ever known one to be benevolent? You have not. 
I, I don't know any of them. I don't know. As you say that, that, you actually realize, well, you've interacted with several and no, they've never been benevolent. Okay, so even if they're not benevolent, they could still be working towards a similar end goal? No. No, you don't think sense. so? Okay, I was trying to be like hopeful there. So uh, do we go after Billy? A normal, uh, oh crap, what's, what is he called? He's a pre Purgatide. Right? No, it was above that. He's oh, above oh, oh. He's a nephrite. A nephrite. Nephrites, a normal nephrite would be trying to get us to separate, trying to get us to go at this alone. Billy is Billy. I'm sure he had his own agenda. But like she like crosses the distance to like get up to Benny. What does your master actually want out of this? My master. Yes, you have one. You can pretend that you're all powerful, but uh, you do have a master. There are others that want you to succeed. And your master is one of those? When Benny says that, echoing through the hallway, the distinct sound of a revolver chamber spinning and then being locked into place and a whispering voice saying, let's go. Question, DM. Hi. Does Garnet recognize that? Yes, and so would Ambrose's character if he were. So would Den. We sh should get going, guys. No, oh, and leave your poor preacher friend behind. Hmm. Um, well, one of two things would happen if we also tried to follow him through that door. One, we would also get sucked into our own personal purg uh, purgatories. Or two, we would be sucked into his personal purgatory. And I don't know about you and me, uh, but uh, I don't think his purgatory and me would mix very well. So, you yeah, know. Oh, it's very interesting in there. What? It's very... How should I put it? It's delightful to see him in his comeuppance. Billy? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's Grant. He's a dick. Um, I don't know. I'll leave it... I don't know, she'll turn around and look at Thomas and Sin. Uh, Safira would like to try to open the door that Billy just walked through. Like, she's not gonna knock on it, just like push on it and see if anything happens. See through the illusion. <laughs> don't fail. If Garnet sees Safira coming to like try to open the door, she's gonna give it a wide berth so she doesn't get sucked in. Oh, success. 17. Come back to Billy for a minute. Did you find your power? Yes. Okay, what do we got? Alright, so I want to do... Well, there's there's kind of two, if that's okay. One to kind of just... Yeah. Um, I have charismatic aura, where I kind of just naturally draw attention to myself if I want to. Um, to a degree. Um, there can be some rules in that. Um... But even at the worst, it's just like people don't, you know, like I, I not people. People are like, hey, what's going on over there? Um, so if there, this guy's here. We're in the church, right? And he's all like, you're not here. You're excommunicated. Blah 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 blah. Right? Okay. <clears throat> you have enough self awareness to realize this is your own personal hell, one of many possible ones where you would get your goals, but then it was taken from you by someone you hate. Sure, um, I, I get that, but I, I, I'm also assuming that we can still try to overcome something here, right? That's the only thing you would do in a purgatory is fight it, yes, until you go bad. 
Okay, so <clears throat> you're making a lot more mistakes than you realize that you are. Because these are my people, the people of God, the people who will walk with me hand in hand from this world into the gates of heaven together. It is him and her together. We, and I start just like preaching right here, like not even on the stage, just right in front of him. And they know that they must give up everything that they have, give everything they have up. Not to me. I am only the vessel of which they give it to God. Um, and they know that once they have given that up, that they will follow me and I will lead. And I'm going to use voice of insanity. I am going to rile these people up and hopefully get a couple of options here. Uh, voice of insanity. Whenever you manipulate a crowd, roll plus soul. And if you succeed, choose up to three options, usable any time during the scene. Um, success with complication, I get two options. Um, even on no success, I get to choose one option, usable any time during the scene, over the crowd becomes uncontrollable and volatile. Blah, 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 blah. Which would be perfect anyway. All right. See through, so, soul. Do I have to draw, do I have to announce inertia before or after the roll? Announce what? Inertia. Oh, you can spend inertia after. Okay. And when's, what's the, I have three inertia already. When does that start to become bad again? Ten. Oh. It's a trap. Don't even motherfucking need it. That's a 23. That is two tens, by the way. That is a literal perfect roll. Um, nice. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I just start whipping up this crowd. Um, you know. As you do, you shove your way past the, the bouncer. The usher. The bouncer. We'll go with bouncer. There's a bouncer at a church like this. And m muscle your way inside. And the door swings open and you stumble back into the hallway. Take one stability damage. As Safira pushed down the door and it opened. Fell through the other way. Can we, can, can, can we take one more step into what that was going to do with Voice of Insane? Because it was going to be so cool. Yes, you can finish your thought. Okay, because I wanted to push past the bouncer and just be like, these people know the true shepherd who will lead them to the gates of heaven. They know who they have come here for. They know who the true usurper is. And they know a devil when they see one. Um, and I want to attract other people to join the crowd. You know, about 50,000 or so of them. Um, uh, um, and then I would like to choose... Um, have the crowd members fight for me and then incite the crowd into, and this is the exact quote from the book, incite the crowd into an orgy of unbridled emotion, either sexual lust, anger, sorrow, violence, generosity, celebration, depending on what concepts you are instilling into them. There is a devil amongst us, and we shall not tolerate this devil. He stands before you a false prophet. Destroy him. And whatever that symbol of, you know, Benny's thing of, you know, holding my uncle in front of me, I want the crowd to rip him apart. Um, as I just command them to do it. Okay, so you lose the point of stability when you stumble out, but you're even more convinced of your own spiritual superiority now. Yes, I am. You broke apart a purgatory. Voice of insanity. That's gross. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, stability damage. You stumble through the door, which gives you a wave of vertigo for a minute because you're driving a car. That's weird. How did that happen? What door? Me. You've been in the car all night. That's me? Mm-hmm. And you're watching this more than being able to control it. 
you've probably had six or seven beers tonight. It was quite the kegger with your friends, of which Billy, Thomas, and uh, what was Steve's dead character's name? Tyson. Tyson are in the car. And uh, Billy and Thomas are in the back seat talking to the invisible friend in the middle. You are fucking sick of this game. They've been playing it since you were eight. You're 16. You've had enough of this shit. You're an adult now. They haven't done it in a while because a couple of years ago, they told you that Randy had to uh, leave for Europe with his parents for a business thing. Since most of you are, have well-off parents, that's perfectly reasonable. Another thing you can note for your backstory is you all come from some form of wealth at some level, not just Garnet. I just have the most. Just, yeah. <laughs> I just have the most. The other thing that flashes into your mind is all of your parents worked for Garnet's company, Garnet's parents' company. Uh, or one subsidiary of it, anyhow, not directly. It's a huge conglomerate. Um, you can react to that for a second how you want, and then Billy and Thomas, you can be your 16-year-old selves. For as far as you're concerned, Randy's always been real. You've never understood this weird game Saphir has played. You've actually starting, you've been starting to wonder a couple of years ago before Randy left to go to uh, London for business with his parents if Saphira might have some kind of mental condition. Now, up until now, the other thing I should point out, Saphira, is that you went along with the game. So you interacted with said imaginary friend because that's how you beat them at the game. You don't let them mess with you. You just go along with it until they give up. But it's been fucking seven years. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So Safira has been drinking, so she has like zero filter. Uh, and so we'll just probably start saying like really crude things to to Randy and just freeforming him uh, taking Casper, the friendly ghost, as his prom date. Uh, and sort of uh, freestyling some uh, Randy Casper slash fic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why, why you gotta come so hard at Randy like that? For those you of you in the friends. back seat, Randy straight up starts crying. For Billy and Tommy. You know how sensitive he is. Look at him. Oh, right. I forgot. Fake people have real feelings. Why wouldn't he have real feelings? I have real feelings. How do you think I would feel if you said some shit like that to me? I think you'd laugh. Other memories start flooding in, Sophia, about how far they've taken this joke. And on birthdays and Christmas, they buy presents and tell you they're from this person and they're always like the perfect gift, exactly what you would like, as if the person knew you really well. And uh, they've come over to your house when you weren't around and helped with chores and claimed that the imaginary friend did it, trying to make it seem like he's the most nice, sweetest person in the world. Okay. And then uh, they so... kind of tried to tell you when you turned 14, he had a mad crush on you. All right, so... In that case, uh, Safira will change her tack a little bit. She uh, will say to Thomas, look, if you have a crush on me, it's fine. You don't have to hide behind Randy this whole time. Me? I don't have a crush on you. And Steve, feel free to, free to roleplay as Billy or your dead character, whoever seems more appropriate. And why do you have to bring that up now? You just yelled at him. And now ousted him. What if what if Billy didn't know? Oh, come on. I've been out for a while. I mean, look at him. Look at him. He's still crying. Well, let me just get on my. It's all right. It's all right, Randy. No. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to talk to Randy. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to calm him down. Why don't you shut your mouth and pay attention to the road? 
It's all right. Oh, why don't I get my little invisible no. hanky to dry his invisible tears? Oh, I I know you. I know you had a crush on, her, but you know, she's kind of a bitch right now. So we'll just deal with it as it comes along. But you know what? We get back to wherever the hell we're going because I forget. But, but let's just all not say anything that we're gonna regret tomorrow, okay? Like you know, let's just all come. Comp- like just let, what's going? What's, I don't even understand what's happening here. What's like what's going on? I thought we were having fun. Yeah, this is supposed to be Randy's welcome home party. Well, shit. All right, yeah, Billy's right. You know what? You know what, Randy? It'll be all right. Billy's right. Sphere, where are we going? By the way, turn on the Backstreet Boys. It's getting boring in here. <laughs> Tyson specifically. I want it that way. So, um, <laughs> you, you guys ask for music. You guys ask for back as clearly as the superior band. And see, that's what you and Randy had in common. You both like Nickelback. You guys oh, asked my for... God, Thomas. Is there something wrong with your brain? I mean, sometimes my parents did say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, there, there's, there's taking a bit too far. The Randy bit is too far. What do you mean? Billy, what is she talking about? Tyson, I, help me out here. I don't know. I do not know. What? Sophia, you got a problem with Randy? How, how can I have a problem with a person who doesn't exist? I don't have a problem with Randy it's because Randy here. isn't real. I have a problem with the rest of you for reviving the bit that we had going on when we were eight. It was fun when we were eight. Now we're not eight. If Ray, okay. Pay attention to the road because I don't want to die. But if Randy wasn't real, how would he pull your hair? And obviously (laughs) Thomas goes and pulls your hair. Oh my God, see? Randy just pulled your hair. Cute, cute. Okay, let's let's let's, 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 let's not pull the hair. Someone, you're severe's driving, right? Yep. Yeah. And you're all a little buzzed. And yeah. You know the, the, maybe maybe, maybe, don't, maybe don't pull her hair. You know, like maybe don't maybe don't pull her hair. It was a friendly tug. She's not like <laughs> not like yanking her hair. Uh. Uh, who's in the front seat? Is it Billy or your other character? Who's in the front seat? Yeah, of your two characters, Steve. Which of you is in the front? Oh, Billy would have been the jerk that probably, like, shotgun. called shotgun and was like, that's mine, you know, and wouldn't let up, wouldn't let it go. He went um, over and noticed it. The more mad Saphira gets, the more heavier foot gets. Okay. So I'm doing two things. So Billy is going to just be like, okay, just, just, so be like, hey, don't pull her hair. She's driving. Let her go. Like, hey, it's real. Like, you look like, get a little heavy there. You okay? But then Tyson, not understanding the, you know, de-escalation necessary in this moment, will playfully grab Thomas and like kind of pull him back and just be like, you know, like start like you know, once someone one hair gets tugged and it's like yeah, and then like pulls Thomas back in, and is like doing the backseat wrestling um, there, which I'm sure uh, will end well. So Safira will respond by slamming on the brakes, swerving the car, and calling out, "Holy shit, a dire bear!" Because uh, we just got raided by <laughs> dire bear. Ah, yeah, yeah. Lord. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid. Something terrible is about to happen. Yeah. That is actually what I was going to make happen. So I'm glad we're on the same wavelength, Safira. Thank the you the audience. so much for the raid. I certainly hope that nothing absolutely terrible happens. You slam on the brakes going 105. 
like you do. Uh, that that Audi doesn't have a working seatbelt in the middle. To the three of them, Randy is tossed forward and ejected through the windshield. Safira sees uh, Billy's head hit the windshield and it shatters. The rest of you see Oof. Randy hit the ground in front of the car, ejected from a car going 110. You can react appropriately. However, no matter what they do, Safira, I'm going to send you what happens in a second. So the three of you, two Steves and one Thomas Anderson, can start freaking out. And you have a real bad concussion, Billy. Uh, I don't even know what to fucking do here. Um, uh. So well, the car is stopped? Like it was like a screeching stop when someone was ejected? Is that, that right? Yes. Okay. Randy. Randy was ejected. Okay. Did a dramatic bounce roll across the street. He's screaming in pain, bent in a different bad angle. Uh, oh. Thomas will start pulling at his seatbelt to try and unlock it from hitting the brake so hard. Like, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, Tyson will pull out his utility knife that he definitely always keeps on him and use the seatbelt cutter um, to start cutting seatbelts. The car is actually pretty undamaged. The major damage was the windshield. Oh, I th the rest I th of you were. Oh, I thought it was okay. No, she no really he doesn't care. No, 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 no. And... He does not care. He is using the seatbelt cutter. <laughs> <to> start <laughs> cutting seatbelts because, you know, it was Tyson. Um, and Tyson will get out and run over um as quickly as he can to Randy. While Billy is cracked upside the skull. Do you say anything when you leap out of the car like, oh my god, Randy, hold on, whatever? Because he's screaming, he's conscious. Uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ, somebody <laughs> called 911. Randy just flew through the fucking window. This is the 90s? Do we have a car phone? Pull out your Zach Morris You're rich. Phone. You've got those real. They're they're smaller than they were in the eighties. In the eighties, so ridiculous. But yeah, like, like, you're, a, like you're a bagged car phone. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um. Yeah. So if Thomas yells that, then Billy will call nine one one on the car phone. Um. We'll plug it into the cigarette lighter first. Right. <laughs> get the charge and then. Put the antenna on the roof. Yeah. Check for, hold on, Sarah. hold on, check for roaming. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in MacGyver now? There's a man dying in the street and you're checking for roaming. I don't want to pay the extra, what was it, 40 cents a minute or whatever for roaming or a, a dollar. It was a lot. Roaming Sarah, how does all this make you feel? So, uh, which character is using the car phone? Billy. Billy. All right, so Safira was like, "Hey, all right, so where where's Randy now, Billy?" He went through the windshield. Oh yeah, what where did he land? I want to make sure I got this right. We all see Randy, correct? <laughs> yes. Yes. And Safira and never there's a has. big ass no, hole really. in the windshield. He's on the street, mostly broken and screaming. Like so his arm is like a bow in it. I will His just leg is backwards. Like I dazed, conf like concussed. Gosh, now, mm, okay. Woo! Hold on. Concussion <laughs> drunk. Um, <laughs> which <Right>. you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> just kind of like look at Safira with blood like coming down my face from where Billy hit the windshield um just be like Safira I d don't know what you're doing I don't know why you've done this but Billy is hurt in the street he is real there's nothing more we can say and I'm hitting 911 
And when he uh, said Randy's in the street, he inadvertently pointed. And, like and that's do. when Safira accelerates. He is not real. I'm going to fucking prove it. She's going to like drive forward, uh, you know, like 50 feet, hit reverse, back up and do it again. Which crushes him. He's at this point, he's on the street convulsing, but he's still trying to make noise. It's not quite dead. If you've seen The Walking Dead, it's like that Negan scene, the infamous one. Uh -huh. Dwayne knows. But yeah, that's here. You just, you just like, ran over debris. I feel like this is just the moment where all of our characters would be in. Like, I'm just being shock. Like, just like yeah, everyone just valid. is like. Okay, here's here's a question: Is there a thud in the vehicle when we go over him? Yeah. Yes, but that's also where most of the windshield is in the front bumper that flew off to. I guess my question is. To all of us, do we like the physicalness of Randy? Like, is it like, true? Like, there's a hole in the windshield, right? And like a person, like a Randy-sized hole in the windshield. Yeah, I mean, he's punched me in the face at least twice. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. To the three of you, Randy's always been real. At first, you just thought Safira was weird with Randy, and in his years past, you began to wonder if something was wrong with Safira, but then he left for two years, and it just kind of went away. Okay, okay. But you right, all know, right. Randy's always had a crush on Safira and done everything he could to be the nicest person to her. Randy has had a crush on Safira. Isn't that, isn't that effing sweet? All right. Okay. I just, like, I think... What did yeah. you just do? Is Thomas saying anything, or is he just gasping, screaming, I, whatever? Yeah, I, 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 he probably exactly that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, actually, he probably would have pissed himself. Oh, no. Like it's valid, for, for real. It's valid. Like just at the, like, Drunk not being car wreck ran over your friend. Yeah, it's a good reaction. Yeah, for a teenager. yeah. Probably Your like dead here in so much fucking trouble. Um, here, this is what you see them doing. Roll They're down the window, faking shock. Roll down the window real quick and throw up, probably. So, all right. So, uh, Safira sort of thinks that it's kind of normal for them to be in shock, uh, because you know, we did just get in a car accident. Uh, so she will uh turn to Billy Wayne. So she's thinking that this is like on the order of like teenage drunk driving, and so she will turn to Billy Wayne and say, Don't fucking call an ambulance, call my uncle, he'll send some people out to fix this. We do not want to involve the cops. So, I was actually just going to bring up that I've already said I punched in nine one one, and I wanted oh, yeah. to have the car There's phone. An operator saying nine one one. What is your? Oh, I was going to ask. Yeah, like, it, it, it was either going to be the moment where I had to decide if I was going to press like you know oh, red yeah, or green, fine. press or, the send send <laughs> button, yeah, or yeah, that's fine. okay. So I just kind of look at Sophia and just be like, Sophia, you just. You just ran somebody over. I ran a box over. No, you didn't. You ran one of our best friends over. I, I am done with this. Okay? I am done with this. Like, for as often yeah, as I've we're all done. been there for you. You just killed somebody. You just said that an fake person is a better friend to you than I've ever been. Fuck it, you know, I am done. And so, uh, Safiri just starts losing her shit, 
uh, she gets out of the car, uh, yells to Billy Wayne, you better not be calling the cops! Uh, and we'll get, we'll get a shovel out of the trunk. One of those emergency collapsible shovels to get your car out of mud or snow. Just kind of... We'll just start freaking out on the car itself. Like, as in, like, you're hitting the car with the shovel? Yeah, just, like, bashing okay. in the, um, like, the tail lights and the headlights. Screaming about this stupid fucking game. I think once she does that, I'll just be like, sorry, send. You see him actually call 911, Safira. And he's talking. You don't have to roleplay that out, Billy, but yeah. They said, 911, you're like, oh my god, someone, can you hold, please? Yeah. Because you're in a big city. Yay. If I see Safira getting out of the car to go get a shovel, I'm assuming you don't know. the worst. You don't know it's a shovel until she starts beating on her dad's car. I, I'm still going to run out to Randy. I'm assuming okay. that she's probably going to finish the job. <laughs> Randy is doing the thing. You've seen that scene. I'll yell back to the car. I'll be like, He's still breathing. Maybe. Talking nonsense. Yeah, and Safira has just had it, so she will run up to where Thomas is uh, and will just start attacking the ground in front of him. She starts beating Randy with a shovel. His left eye pops out. I will attempt to throw my body in the way. You get hit with the shovel, knocked to the side. Because Thomas was never a big guy. Yeah, I mean, and Safira will try to not aim for Thomas because she oh, yeah. likes Thomas just fine. That actually stops you when you hit him. You don't hit him in the face or anything. You just hit him in the chest and it knocks him backwards. Knocks the wind out of him for a second. And that's when, to Thomas, Are you Randy ready makes his last rattling to admit breath. that Randy was never real? And that's when Thomas hears Randy's last breath rattle out. And right when that happens, you can see him, Safira. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oops. You guys were right. Uh. Oops. <laughs> Whoops! I'll give Rachel a second to figure out how the character would react to that. What the fuck? Randy. Uh... Uh, she is currently beating him with a shovel? And she gave me a solid whack as well. No, that's what he's saying. The nine one one, I think, is what he's playing out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's where the scene will fade out. Safira drops the shovel. Just kind of yeah, stares down. Just Thomas like, is rolling around. Almost goes like catatonic when she sees like this strange person's dead body in front of her. What the fuck? What did you do, Sophia? And at that moment, the full memory floods into everyone's minds, not just Sophia and the Purgatory. Sophia remembering unlocks it for all of you. After that event, Sophia was committed for two years. Oh Nobody my. saw her for that period. It was the beginning of the end for your friends group at that point, though. It's hard to come back from some shit like that and then you don't quite remember what it was but some other real bad shit happened too very soon after that hmm. the two of you and you just finished splitting the group apart but this was the catalyst that started the downhill roll that's where we're going to take our mid-show break oh my randy We'll be back in 10 minutes, but Randy won't. So don't go anywhere, audience.
we've returned from break. Safira, please track three stability permanently. You can never go higher than that. Cool. Oh, that's bad. Well, you can never go higher than three from the top, not your current level. If you're lower than three already. So I'm always going to be at best shaken? Yes. Okay. Also, but not stirred. For the players and the audience. Well played, sir. Uh, Safira was not under the effect of supernatural influence as the memories flood back to you all. Safira, as one could tell, being a perfect hit woman with no remorse, was always having some level of psychosis that was undiagnosed. Sometimes psychosis makes you see things, sometimes it makes you not see things. Uh, after this event, Safira was committed for two years and treated and released. However, her very rich family couldn't allow the stain on their name. So they basically gave her a trust fund and booted her out. She got mad. Active teenage 18-year-old rebellion drained the trust fund, got in a lot of trouble, got desperate, and here she is. Got in with the wrong crowd. The door flies open. Severa comes stumbling out, probably dry heaving, but that's up to her. As you all stand there being flooded with the same memories. Did you have a good drive, Safira? He was real. He was oh my god, he was real. Oh. oh, I remember him now. Oh, he asked me to cry. And I remember we had that one party. And he helped me clean up afterwards. He was like, <sighs> and I just shut it away like it was nothing, like he was nothing. And then I killed people for a living. What is wrong with me? <sighs> And her heart grew three sizes that day. Oh, shut up, Benny. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Good one, Benny. We we were in that we were in that car too. That was to build. We were. Why don't I remember it? Why, why did I not remember that? Safira, you need to breathe. Whole party, except sin. Roll C through the illusion. And you don't have to because of what happened earlier in the side. Uh, 20 success. Nope. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Sorry, good. everybody else started stacking on top of it. I was like, did I read my number right? <laughs> uh, 15 for full success. Glorious. 13, success with complication. Glorious. And to the surprise of no one, Safira got a failure. <laughs> <laughs> so, success with complications minus one stability. This is going to be real bad. Failure, minus two stability. Everyone else, no stability loss. That's five Sephira just lost in the last turn or so. <laughs> What's that put you at? No. Anxious. Oh, oh no. I was already <clears throat> down a stability. Oh, yay! Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you all see the same thing, though. As the memories flood you and Thomas says, why couldn't we remember? Everything flickers in and out for a second, like reality flickers in and out for a second. For a brief moment, just like someone else who never told the party this. Uh, you're in a giant room with gleaming, uh, like a Walmart floor, pure white, like a hospital floor, pure white, polished. You can smell the disinfectant, brightly lit, glaring neons across the ceiling. It's a very large room. There's this really weird device in the middle that's round and circular, very wide with lots of like wires and uh, fiber optic cables dangling from the ceiling that's 40 feet up from it like it bows up and then it's wires in a glass tube and then it bows back out 
and there's massive power cables coming out of it through the middle of the room and scattered around the room are uh, nine, three, three, sorry, uh, eight, three on one side, three on the other, two on each end. Tube-like devices, they're like a surgery table at an angle, except they're surrounded by a metal tube, the plexiglass so you can see through it. And uh, it could fit a human inside of them and it's got machinery and electronics coming in and out of the top middle part of it. Only you all see this from the perspective of being inside the Trapped. Horrible searing pain in your chest, left legs, heads, except for guard. What? Sin, this confirms that you already started to figure out. Yeah, and at this point, uh, the bond roll I made at the beginning, I rolled well enough for the second tier. You may choose one option at any time during the session. See the true form of a creature or current location. I would like to see the true form of our current location. Take one more stability damage. Right. As you, this is you realize, so well. And you realize this is the true form. This brief glimpse. Machine I'm irrational say. now. <laughs> this is where your body is. Garnet doesn't see this, though, from the perspective of being inside the tubes. Garnet, you see this as if you were the room. As if somehow I... some part of you is making this work. It's run. And then you all snap back to the purgatory hallway of the apartment building. I don't get it. Uh, Safira just starts screaming incoherently. Safira, you need... Uh, you need to listen. Um, listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Nope. Two seconds. I really need Tyler to check his sides because I'm going to... I was going to do something, but oh. he hasn't answered my question. Sure, sure, sure. Sorry, Steve. No, no, no. <laughs> So, I roll will and soul? Yep, in that order. Okay. Um, in the moment when Billy starts to talk, Garnet puts her hand on Safira's shoulder and says, I don't have time for this. <clears throat> Hopefully. Uh, so, will is success with comp- uh, Can I steal from the inertia pool, actually? Yes. Okay, I steal one dice from the inertia pool, uh, making, we're rolling d10s, right? Yeah. Uh, so 21 will, and 17 uh, uh, soul, so success on both. So it is your choice if you draw from what we discussed the other day from your backstory, or take a stability point of damage or take a minor injury, one of the three. I pull from what we talked about in the backstory. Okay. Um, for no reason whatsoever, Benny smiles, cackles a little in the corner. Um, Safira, roll willpower. And your new stability level, this will be great. Uh-huh. <laughs> also, I, I love you, Rachel. <laughs> Success. So. Oh, I, uh, no, I don't think it, did it calculate the new penalty? No, you have to do that. I don't think this sheet does that. Oh, okay. Should I reroll or just? No, you can just subtract the penalty and tell me what that makes it. Uh, it would make it 14 because I rolled a 16. Okay. So I think that's still a success. Success, yeah. success with complication. Yeah, 15 and up is perfect success, yes. Yeah, so success with complications. Yeah. So you're at a minus two right now? Yeah. Okay. So you were unable to prevent the magic from working. 
However, it just it's it, so what apathy does is uh, however she describes the spell, we can get to that in a second. But basically, uh, it's pushing into you the apathy and inertia of death of being dead. It's just like everything drains out and you don't fucking care. However, because you got a success with complications, it doesn't stop you from feeling what, ha- what you did. It just changes your reaction from screaming, crying, and thrashing to why even fucking bother? I should just fucking die. So... If it gets real bad, you might stop caring about the breathing. So uh, my headcanon, sort of with playing Saphira the past couple sessions, has been like, she was like... She had the psychosis, but she was like, still had feelings. And then after she realized she had murdered a friend, that is when she turned them off and essentially became a sociopath. When her memories came back, like all of a sudden she could feel feelings again. Uh, And so Garnet does her magic and Saphira immediately stops crying and just looks, looks at Garnet. You shouldn't have done that. Maybe not, but too late. This is how she got the way she is, by turning off emotions. And her emotions are going to do Fine. us no good in the inventory. And I'm back to not caring, so can we move on? Um, um, scene, please. Scene. I'll tell you when the scene changes. <clears throat> Only uh, um, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about I have, it. I have, the other way. I have out of character, we need, I had a character conversation I need to have with two of you. Very quickly. This is, gonna, <laughs> okay. this is gonna get this is gonna get real weird real quick. Alright. So Savannah and Rachel. Yeah. Uh, uh, Savannah. <laughs> yes. Are you okay if Billy does something that might mechanically undo what you just did? That's fine, as long as you're fine with the repercussions. Sure, sure. I got I got murdered, killed a couple of sessions ago. This is just gonna be what it be. Um, Rachel, mm-hmm. are you comfortable with this? With one, player characters messing with your brain emotions, mm-hmm. and two, the whiplash between <laughs> these two character settings of emotions and not emotions. Uh, I am. Thank you for checking in. Okay. Then I would like to once again go back to Voice of Insanity. Um, and revert back and be like, Safira, this is not the answer. You have shut off your emotions for years and she is messing with you. She is purposefully purposefully turning you off to something that you had just overcome. Rise back up. Feel back what it is that you had just gained. Turn, you have control. No, I'm actually doing this to you. You have control over this. Turn it back on. Feel the emotions. Feel what you've done. Confront it. Feel it again, Safira. And I'm going to do Voice of Insanity, and if I can get the roll, I'm going to use my charisma to uh, whip her back up into an emotional state. Please tell me you slap her in the head and say healed. (laughs) You are healed! (laughs) And you're all about to find out another side effect of magic. (laughs) We're just hitting Sephira with all this magic. (laughs) A proper reaction, I mean, Benny. Benny just starts cackling in the corner. Uh, Mm. Uh, hold on hold on wait what are we rolling uh, hold on. Mm-hmm. billy's rolling to activate his power oh i'm gonna take I, inertia why is thomas making noises because he saw the result oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm taking how many inertia do we have left for this session how many the players plus one but this is it for the senior session Scene, and it's players plus one so so how many did you use savannah just one, just one? Just so one. we've got one two three four five six so we have six left i'll take yeah. three 
How? Why do you need so many? Because I rolled. Because I rolled real bad. Oh. <laughs> Your personal inertia is now six. Yes. That becomes a 19, so I did need all three. Jeez Louise. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so full success, so I have three, you know, I have, I have three times I can pick um, what people up into emotional frenzies. So, energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed. That's one of the fundamental rules of magic. You activate your power, which is supernatural, and force it onto Sephira, and the apathy sinks into Billy. He just doesn't fucking care anymore. <laughs> oh. He takes the full effect of the spell, and Sephira, you snap right back, re-experiencing all the emotions as if you never had again. Uh, okay, so that was real fun, because, uh, so, what Sephira will do is she will start crying again like i'm sorry i didn't mean it i didn't mean it uh and then so she's on the ground just sort of like huddled up crying and she will just throw her arms around billy wang's legs and just like i'm sorry i'm so sorry you're a pastor please can you help me please help me uh with the apathy now setting in i will just look down and i like i've had my bible out to like you know do whatever I was going to do, and I'll just close it and put it back in my vest. Help yourself for once, Safira. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our little garden laughing and character just an FYI. Uh, she, like, leans down to Safira, and she's just like, we have a job to do, and this is your chance to make up for everything that you did. So... If you could dry your eyes for me, please, so we can get going. God, we are f so fucked up. And Sin is going to get down and hug Safira because this Gar is. Garnet awful. will move out of the way for Sin. She's she said what she needed to say. Awful. She's just going to hug Safira until like everybody else starts moving. And then she'll help Safira up. Sorry, Sid. I'm so sorry for everything. I'm so sorry about Brandy. I'm so sorry for the way we broke up. And I'm... Uh, <sighs> you deserve so much better than me. You do. I hope you found it. I don't know about that. I've done some dog. things too. <clears throat> uh, we'll worry about it later. Let's go. Willpower rolls all around. Oh no. Rushing memories, clashing supernatural powers in the hallway, stuck in purgatory. Benny in the corner just cackling. Um, I'm stealing an inertia die off the off the top. Okay. <laughs> what a delightful sight you all are. Fourteen. Uh, I think I still have success with complications. <laughs> I, I'm going to use one of the uh, audience vote rerolls to reroll that bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Audience votes, yeah. I would like to do that too, please. Oh, do it, I, Billy. I have one okay. too. Yeah, we all. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, ten. Sorry. I was going to say we all rolled okay. like trash. There we go. Much better. <laughs> okay, I got. I, I got a, 22. I a nine. I got 22. Beautiful. What about Billy? Uh, using the uh, vote reroll, I got a 20. Okay. I got 22 with my inertia and my... Re and my. I also just stole one of my old audience votes. Thank you for reminding me of that, Rachel, because that would have been bad. Uh... <laughs> I got you. Uh, Sephira, success with complications. But I had you roll, but you're already kind of broken at the moment, so you don't really have to change anything. All of you who succeeded, you're shaken. I don't mean mechanically, I just mean mentally shaken in whatever form that takes for your characters. Except for Thomas, who failed. That's some goddamn nonsense, spooky woo bullshit, Thomas. <laughs> you're, you're not. 
you're not you're not doing okay. You piss yourself. You start shaking. It's twice Dwayne has peed himself tonight. <laughs> Please, uh... Hold on, I got a thing. Grimace. Okay, I haven't seen that yet. Please drop your stability. Unhinged. Uh, what? Uh, what? Unhinged. Unhinged. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's all just too much now, everything that's been happening. Finally, I'm not the worst one off. This is why. Meanwhile, my ass is still sitting at composed. Benny. <laughs> you sense the weakness. Same. You can smell it. You look at them all, you don't even bother with Garnet. You look at the rest of them, you've accomplished your mission with Sephira. Thomas. He is the weakest link. Carry on. Oh, Thomas, you poor wet thing. I thought you were going to call him a wet dream for a second there. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this is just too much. Oh, perhaps you should go hide in one of the rooms. Benny, shut your face. Get away from it all. Get away? No, No, Thomas. Get away? No, Thomas, you should stay right there. You could use some space. Or you could listen to Garnet, who's very grumpy and very bossy. Isn't she? She's always bossy. Exactly. She's always telling me what to do. Oh, no. I'm not going to do what you're going to tell me what to do. (sighs) You sure about that, Thomas? Oh, there she is questioning your decisions once again. I'm not listening to anybody anymore. I'm going to do what I want to do. And what do you want to do, do? Uh, I run through the nearest door. Oh, fuck it. (laughs) Uh, I was gonna say that she like sticks out her foot at Thomas, but <laughs> just have him like stumble. <laughs> and Thomas trips through the nearest door. <laughs> All we had to do was go to door sixteen, the only door with a number on it. Hey, wait a minute! You wait a minute! Wait a minute! Who's the first one who opened a damn door? You, <laughs> you did it. It was I the whole time. Yeah, we had one job. You forked it up. I did. I did. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> All out. right. I mean, technically, our job is to resolve our sins, and we're making a lot of progress on that front. Are we, though? I don't know. Can we just have Denver back? Funny you should mention that. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta uh, check. Ow, ow, woo. <laughs> the hounds of hell are coming. The, the puppies of purgatory. The pups of purg. It's my new band name, the pups puppies. of purg. I love it. And he starts cackling. Yeah. Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> might be kind of funny considering what just happened but describe your worst memory to us please oh my worst memory Thomas's It'd or be Drake's Randy, but that'd be weird so maybe not up to you though what was my worst memory you could tie it into your confession since you fed purgatory here, uncaring what happens to the uh, collateral damage of what you do. Uh, so Thomas, this is all probably from like third person view. Thomas is sitting in his in his room, all of the lights down low, computers. 
all around him. Feeding off the lovely fluorescent lights that are flickering every now and again. RGB all over the place. And he's looking through code. He finds something. Something he's never really come across before. He doesn't really know what to do with it. So he gets online. A uh, friend of his. A fellow hacker. And together they both try to unravel the secrets of this deep website containing all of these strange videos and sounds. Something hidden in the code. Something. The truth. Or at least what he believes to be the truth. And just as he thinks that he is beginning to unravel its deepest secrets, as days turn into weeks, something has happened to his fellow hacker. They have gone dark. No amount of looking has been able to find them. And the obsession with the code continues on. Continually trying to figure out its secret again, its truth. Puts all others aside. Becoming that total recluse that he almost once was, but now is. All of all of the years compacted into what seems like seconds. His parents dying and him not caring, not going to the funeral. Because the only thing that matters is the code. Dig deeper, Thomas. There's so much more to be found. Benny will caress the back of Thomas's head, and little tendrils of silver will come out and just bury themselves in your scalp. Yes. Yes, yes, it is. It is deeper. This continues this keyword. The reflection of the code reflecting in his eyes. What do you yes. ultimately find? Or do you want me to narrate that? It's up to you. Oh, you can. I'm sure you'll be much more glorious than I will. <laughs> Trying to figure out the truth, of course, means you have to delve into the dark net, the dark web. And not with some silly generic Onion browser. No, you write your own custom code to access websites that can't be registered on the World Wide Web. You make a network of friends, people whose faces you never see, whose real names you'll never know. You learn a lot about advanced methods of masking your identity and advanced methods of finding sites that don't want to be found even on the dark net, which by the way has its own whole supplement for cult. Perhaps that will create a spin-off adventure. Where you all get to play Thomas's friends one day. But until then, you dig deeply into the dark night. You immerse yourself in the shit that exists there. Because to find the truth, you have to see it all. All the all real all the real bad things. Not just the red rooms but the thing that the dark net mostly exists for, that really vile thing. 
It forever alters how you think and what you see. At some points in time, in order to get information from people, you help these people to do what they do. The shows and the disturbing things they do and the human trafficking. Six years. Not like tons of them, but years. Pretty soon you find yourself making your living off the dark net because this is where you live now. Pretty soon you're running some of these websites. How far would you go to find what you're looking for? With the contacts you'd have to make and the favors you'd have to do and the ways you'd have to make money? All the way. I need to know. Hey Benny, how do you how do you keep him going when he starts to hesitate when it gets real vile? We won't go into detail. If you stop, you'll never have your answers, Thomas. It's not a real person that you're trading it's simply code and image that's not actually stealing it's merely ones and zeros in a system i see the door nothing that's right you have nothing to worry about Are, are you sure? I see the door. I know how to open it. Should I open it? You've come so far. How can you give up now? <laughs> I'm not afraid. That surprises me. You sound like you're backing out. No. No, no, I've come too far. Just one little click can give you every answer you've ever wanted. There's what? nothing outside for you. There's no one outside for you. Just you and that screen and all the answers you could possibly seek. One click. That's right. He does a couple of keystrokes his finger sits over the enter button as he looks back over his shoulder at Benny and he pushes right it really really slowly that was it that was that last time that last missing person those last frantic parents. That's when the FBI finally figured out who you were. It's two days later. You finally finished downloading the two terabytes of data that's the answer you've been looking for. All you have to do is decipher, because you've already broken security, all you have to do is decipher the data and you know the truth, and that's when the FBI break down your door. How do you react to that? Exactly as I reacted before. Thomas stands up from his desk, grabs the, uh, what do you want it to be? You worked on the Silk Road. You could have literally any gun you wanted. Oh, I wouldn't be too gauche. I'd, I'd probably just have a, a Desert Eagle. 
pulls pulls out his yeah, uh, nondescript <laughs> non nondescript non big, big pistol <laughs> gold plating and says no I must learn the truth and aims it to the FBI they bring up their guns they scream shooter and Thomas says oh wait 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 go ahead I must know the truth. And before he picks up the pistol, he takes out the USB that's got the two terabytes of data in it, drops it into the barrel. Turns it and puts it in his mouth and pulls the trigger. Benny starts laughing maniacally. Please, please abuse the audience, Benny. <laughs> the taste of knowledge is so sweet that it kills. <laughs> Download pulls, complete. Thomas pulls the trigger, downloads the data. The apartment shudders a little as Thomas disappears and wakes up in his own personal purgatory away from the group because he's dead and in hell. Benny, what would you like to say to the rest of the people in the group in the hallway still? His back is to them and then he slowly turns around. I regret to inform you that you'll have to attend another funeral. <laughs> what are you, you talking about? The, you can all feel the absence of Thomas. And for the players, Thomas is dead. For real. <clears throat> Wait, no, no. What happened to Thomas? Where's Thomas? We need Thomas. We can't do this without Thomas. Where's Thomas? Oh. Thomas has gone down the rabbit hole of information, the highway of information, you will, a silk road of sorts, a path of ones, zeros, and wires. No, no, he, he has to be okay. here. I am done with your weird drawling voice. And she just walks down the hallway towards room 16 and she's gonna open that door because that's the only place she knows they're heading. Like it. Very well. Ambrose, I love the voice you're using. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, you don't really care. You broke one and killed one. Mission's accomplished. What would you like to do? Well. I wish you all the very best luck on your journey, but this is where our paths diverge. I have what I want, and I can't ask any more of this group, per my master, as it were. I hope you enjoy Denver when you get him back. After all, he was alone for so so long. I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Say toodles to your master for me. Well, I certainly shall, though. They've been watching you this whole time. Yes, but personal messages on, are better. Would you like to sign a card? Oh, yes, that would be lovely. He will actually pull one of the I'm knives like, shall out. I carve it in your flesh? Uh, check your side, Ambrose. Oh, God, why? Uh. On second thought, as much as I would love cold steel biting into my skin at your hand, my lady... Tell him yourself. He has the power he needs now to appear. And Benny will start to back into the shadows as they wrap around him and all you hear is... 
Can I make a grab for something while Benny disappears? Sure. While you're <laughs> yes, I'm grabbing that. something from his face. <laughs> yes, you can. While you roll that, which is going to be uh, violence. You now need to have a kitchen knife as a prop, please. Oh, I will. <laughs> um, you hear that sound again, that weird sound in the hallway. Revolver chamber spinning in a click like Russian roulette. A little cool. louder now. Uh, what was his name? Oh. A character's name. Oh, Big Dad. I You're know. Yeah, Big what, Dad, what was your, your name? <laughs> yes. What is your, what is your, uh, Fallen Angel's name. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, make one up, Big Dad. You could have lied. None of us would have known. Um, I'm taking another one of my audience votes to roll this. Yeah. Fre Frederick. Chuck, the Fallen Angel. <laughs> uh, I thought Chuck was a prophet. Uh, 18. <laughs> success violence. You grab it, but it's not a knife. Cool. It's a so, mangled fork. <laughs> I got a fork. Um, Walter. I thought you were going to say spork. fork you, Benny. Fork you, Benny. <laughs> and the hole you drag yourself out of. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Big Dad, is your LOL and approval of Walter? That's Delta Green. Though that would make sense. Kind of. Uh, I have to I'm... review that prequel to remember what the character's name is, but he wouldn't use that name anyways now. Doesn't he would have a new name. Yes, but Garden doesn't know that. That's correct. So, calls out down the hallway. <laughs> hey, insert name. Let's have a little fun. Then is still walking towards door 16. She's done with this. It's fine. You can feel the amusement, Garnet, and you know he's coming. Mm -hmm. He's not here yet. Um, Manifestations take time. Playing yes. into the apathy thing, I just would be like, this is all dumb. And just turn and walk with Sin to the room and just be, even though you're not even like, yeah, Thomas died. Hey, Sin, Whatever. you're going to grab your buddy, Safira? I mean, Sephira would follow once she sees Sin and Billy okay. going in that direction. Then, as long as I don't have to, as long as Garnet Falling doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah, I sort of, I sort of imagine Sin has like Sephira's hand, and she's like maybe dra like kind of dragging her, leading her. She like the most she can do for Sephira is try to end the situation. Uh, and then Sephira is definitely out of spoons, so she's like, "Yes, this is the thing we need to accomplish. Let's do it." Garnet's following behind with the fork in hand. Hold on one second. Headset. It. Continue the scene till I return. Well, shouldn't we know if the door opens or not? Or we're we just traveling down the hallway. How far away is room 16? We're traveling uh, down the hallway. I've made, an executive, I've made an executive decision. We're traveling down the hallway. <laughs> while Tyler fixes his headset. Okay, so let's all agree we don't go through any more random doors. I think it's a little late for that. I think the damage has been done. We can still agree not to do it again! I think the damage has been done, Sin. It can always be worse. As someone that has reconstructed my parents' faces, it can always be worse. And I regrew my entire body bone by bone and muscle by muscle. It fucking sucks. Congratulations. Thank you. It was really hard. And for her part, Safira is just like, she's obviously going through some shit in her own head. And she's just like, whispering names to herself. Um, kind of like uh, if people can think of Game of Thrones without sadness, uh, Arya's death list. Um, and if you watch the news, like some of them are people who like went missing or were found murdered. 
Oh, now we have that. Made a contact. Kill something with him. Shoot the fuck out. Sophia, yeah, is that actually going to make you feel better? I have to try. Why? Why not? I'm going through a lot. Okay, give me a break, please. Please. I didn't say anything. I just need ten minutes. Of me not without talking? Without you down-talking me. Just ten minutes. Please. That's a long time, Safira. Ten minutes of not talking? Not down-talking me. Say whatever you want. Just... I... Begging you, leave me alone right now. I do not have the emotional capacity to deal with it. Okay. Thank you. And she'll go back to muttering names to herself. So, Billy, how's that feelings coming along? I can't pick on Severe, I have to pick on somebody. <laughs> Like, as I'm walking away to 16 with Sin, just being like, throw my arms up. I don't know. How do you feel about your church? This is magical apathy, right? Mm -hmm. Be like, I don't know. Fuck it. So, Billy, since since you're very blasé about everything right now. So, like, we know, well, I know why most of us are here. Thomas doesn't matter anymore because he's, you know, you know. <laughs> um, so, why do you think you're here? I don't know, probably being dumb enough to associate with y'all for so long? <laughs> probably. I'd buy it. On that point, were we always destined to be this fucked up, or were we this fucked up when we were all friends? I'm just gonna throw it out there. We had one of us run the other one over three or four times and then bash him in with a shovel. I think we were all pretty fucked up to begin with. <laughs> oh, look, room 16. <laughs> But I need to talk to his parents, but they're gonna hate me, but I need to talk to them, I need to apologize, but they're gonna hate me, oh my god, how do I do that? Uh, I don't think there's gonna be any talking to his parents. I'm pretty sure his dad would kill you on sight. Thanks. All I asked for was ten fucking minutes. You couldn't even give me that. I wasn't down talking to you, I was being very serious. His father would probably kill you on sight. Can you maybe, like, take some of the contempt out of your voice, please? I know I deserve it, but... There Jesus, is... Mary and Joseph, stop! There is Just no stop. contempt in my voice. There is now. Shh. <laughs> like, finger to your lip. <laughs> finger to your lip. <laughs> and she just hugs Safira for a moment. Hold, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, wait, hold, 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 hold on. Uh, Rosie, how do you feel about violence? Oh, I'm all for PvP. Okay, um, your finger's about to get bent all the way fuck backwards. That's that's fine. You should you should be like piranha. Yum. <laughs> no, she. Uh, Garnet, as like the, the the finger touches the lip and like Sin goes in to like hug Sephira, she like slides in, grabs her finger, and just bends it backwards. Mm, yeah, I scream, scream. Just you know, broken bones suck. I mean, I I'll roll for it. Like we no, can roll, I'm, roll I'm happy off. with you taking that. That's fine. Okay. Uh, one minor injury. I think I'm fixed. 
But you can finish the scene because that got epic. Whatever the end of the scene is from Sin's point of view. Don't ever fucking shush me again. Don't be such a bitch! Sorry. I was born this way. Again, congratulations! Thank you. Maybe it's hey, lean. When you said, oh, look, room 16, you weren't kidding. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I would open it, because... I assume I'm still under the effect of not of not giving fuck. Yes, until you all step into the room, then the scene will change. <clears throat> okay. Oh my god, I love it! You open the door, and there's like this ridiculous cat fight happening in the hallway with broken bones. <laughs> you open the door. Mm -hmm. It's a family apartment. It's actually uh, looks nice. Uh, it's got. I mean, it's an old apartment, but it's well taken care of. You can tell from the decorations and the stuff laying around and the way the furniture is set up that this is a loving family. Probably a mom and dad, a kid or two. Smells like dinner. You can hear the mom and the kid giggling. Dad's reading the newspaper because you can hear the crinkle sound when you flip the pages. It smells like dinner time. Mm. Uh, as soon as you open the door, uh, you see the mother turn and look at you. Uh, she says, oh, good. We're wondering when you were going to get here. It's almost time for dinner. Come wash your hands. Come to the table like you're more kids that were supposed to show up. And you can see on the wall a placard that says the Venezia family. Uh, do you all go inside? I do. Uh, do we know anything about the name? Does the name trigger anything? No. Uh, then, yeah. Anybody not go in besides Thomas Jeez. and Benny? <laughs> uh, no, I, I go in. I broke somebody's finger. I'm feeling great. <laughs> um, there's a boy of about eight, maybe, and a girl of about six playing with toys. Uh, father just kind of nods at you, with an even tone in his voice says, Go ahead and sit down. And the table's big enough for just all of you and them, just big enough. Smells like roast in the oven. Is anybody What's... actually washing their hands? Yes! Uh, and I'm gonna yeah. try to do what I, I can with my finger. <laughs> <laughs> there's, probably, there's probably like a, I don't know, a popsicle stick there, a splint or something. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I will try up. and give you some first aid in the bathroom. The father looks up when he notices your finger sin. Says, oh, you must be new. How'd you die? I, I didn't. Everyone here is dead. Maybe the mother says they could be one of those that hasn't, you know, accepted it yet. You know how it is. Oh. And the father just nods sagely and says, here, let me show you the ropes. And he walks over to you. He says, watch, it's not actually real. And then he sinks his hand into your head all the way and pulls it out. Pulls what like, out? His hand. This oh. is Santa Sin. Well, yes, but I'm like, yeah, he doesn't, doesn't right remove out? anything. He just pulls his hand out. Yeah. I was like, but yeah, no, I had the same thought. I was like, I was just like what? what's, what's happening? happening here? And for a second, it hurts like hell, like getting punched through the skull would hurt. But then you're like, wait, it isn't real. And your finger snaps back into place and all your injuries disappear because they're not real. Take a point of stability damage, though. I... Anyone so... who is injured fully heals and loses a stability. So I'm at unhinged. I'm alive? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, can can we stay injured and not lose stability? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> a friend is me. Mm, make a willpower roll. Fail. In that you know case, I'm yes, gonna, you can. Re, I'm going to re-roll that. No, failure is what you wanted, because oh. that means you don't accept reality. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, hey, hey. Um, 
when Garnet goes, so she like takes the fork that's been in her hand and like puts it in her pocket, and then like when she starts washing her hands, um, it's running red <laughs> with blood. Dabbing yeah. yourself with it or something. Uh, um, let's go ahead, we'll say, um, speaking of hands, we have a hand for you. No, we need a hand. We from need them. a hand. We're looking for a hand. Yeah, but <laughs> Rachel got confused, but we'll just pretend Safira did because she's not in her right mind. Sure. Um, while I'm in the kitchen washing my hands at the kitchen sink, mm -hmm. what's on the stove? Funny you should ask that. Um, also, anyone who did heal fully, which means not Safira and not anyone who wasn't hurt, can add a new stat. Add it anywhere you want on your roll 20 sheet in your notes. It doesn't matter. Okay. Awakening, rank one of five. You hit five, you might wake up in the machine. Or you might die. Uh, so because Sin is unhinged at this point, she just sort of looks at her finger, shrugs, and uh, washes her hands and starts looking around for this, for Randy's hand? Does no. that make sense? Um. Hold on one second. Okay, so <clears throat> the stovetop has side dishes. It's got a box of stovetop stuffing, 70s version. It's got canned creamed corn, some green beans. And then it's got all the stuff left over from preparing a roast. You know, the potato uh, discardings, the carrot discardings, some fingernails. That's what you see on the stove. Um, would someone surmise to say that the hand might be in the roast? Or the roast is the hand? <laughs> when you think that to yourself, the mother says, um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have to uh, get our other daughter out to the dinner table. And she looks at her son says, Rodrigo, go get your sister. He runs into another room and you hear squeaky wheels and he pushes out what looks like a teenage girl made up of stitched pieces of dead flesh that's rotting in a wheelchair. Missing a hand. Mother says, oh dear, she's lost her hand again. It's like, we'll need a replacement. All of them look at you, group of you, with hunger in their eyes. That's where we pause till next week. One, two, three, not it. <laughs> Go find my body. I have two. <laughs> and once again, the house closes in around them. And we must leave them to their purgatories for another week. As for our other terrifying tales and awesome adventures you can enjoy between now and then, dear audience, uh, on Mondays, this week is the finale of Delta Green, which will be followed next week by Dune. Later on Mondays, we have the finale of Mythos World, which next week will be followed by Solemn Vale. On Tuesdays, we have uh, one last set. You won, yes. yes. One last session of Black Void before we move on to Black Hack. We'll be switching GMs from Thomas Anderson to the Space Lord. Does on Wednesdays, the yes, Mecha Hack, thank you. On Wednesdays, <laughs> the One Ring run by Sean on Thursdays. We have uh, one more session of Ambrose's Changeling, the Lost Three Shot Charity Milestone. Then we begin Vampire the Requiem, run by Rachel. Later on Thursdays, Pathfinder 2E Gothic Horror. On Fridays, Masks of Nyarlathotep, followed by 5E Dracogenesis. On Saturdays, we have a uh, homebrew 5E game called, uh, nope, I lost it, Help Garnet. Uh, Usurpers of Ruination. Usurpers yes. of Ruination. 
where they also have one more session before they take their holiday hiatus and Warhammer 40k happens run by Harry and then Usurp Priest of Ruination will be back in January because Tara cannot run without Dwayne. That's just how that works. Right. Later on Saturdays, we have SCP, the RPG, but not this week, next week. One more missed session because the GM will not be there. And then on Sundays, we have uh, 5e Plan J, the new Kickstarter run by, uh, created by Atlas Games, followed by Colt once again, Sunday evening. Make sure you catch them all. Doom Seekers of Enlightenment, let the viewers know the next show they can catch you in and anything else cool you do online. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed my uh, final reprise of Benny. And I will be back to Denver next week. Yay! We'll see if he's completely wow. and utterly damaged. Who knows? What? 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 Oh, anyway, <laughs> you can find me on the internet as Am Changeling because of me, Am Changeling. And you can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. I have new stickers coming. Tick the tea kettle from Pathfinder, and it's a free action to boop the snoot. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Steve. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him. And tonight I played Billy Wayne with a small um, seat cut cutting appearance from Dead Tyson. Uh, next time you can find me will be. Friday <clears throat> uh, for Dragon Genesis, A Flight of Whimsy. Check it out. It's cool. Miss. Thank you. And hello, I am Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Tonight I played Garnet. <laughs> Ambrose, I love you. Ambrose, uh, you need to mail me the fork, <laughs> please. Um. <laughs> um and you can find me next on Vorpal Tales tomorrow evening for maybe the last episode of Mythos World, maybe two more episodes. Um, and yeah, and then you can find me Thursday uh, for Pathfinder. Uh, and then normally you would also find me Saturday evenings with SCP, but as Tyler said, we will be missing one more session. Hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, as far as when you can find me next, uh, I will be back here tomorrow for the finale of Mythos World. We're going to kill Oppenheimer. It's going to be great. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to be over on Plastic Age Plays doing some Scarred Lands D&D with my druid. Uh, looking forward to that. And then Friday, Mask of Nyarlath Hotep. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And uh, well, yeah, Thursday, I'm going to be here for Ambrose's the finale of his Changeling game. And then, yes, I'm going to be running Vampire the Requiem. Uh, I'm going to be doing the best aspect of Requiem, which is Belial's Brood. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter to find out what I'm up to at Stolen Fires. And that brings us to me, Dwayne. You can find me on the internet at made of kimchi and uh the next time you guys will see me will be tomorrow wait what's today tuesday today's sunday right yeah so yeah tuesday for the uh yes the season finale of black void uh under nebulous skies and then you probably will not see me very much i will be on kind of a hiatus for the holiday season due to work but I will still be lurking in the shadows and uh, I will still be active on Fridays. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom. You can find me on Twitter at mom underscore sized. And the next place you can find me is actually on two places on Thursday. You can find me on Pathfinder here live in Warple Tales. And you can find me over on Martlet Games at the same time uh, playing Psychopomps Incorporated, hashtag Kurkata, where I play as Samedi, and uh, it's hashtag Kurkata because all of the players are female identifying, so yay, it's fun. Uh, that's just a fun dimension to it. And then you can find me on Saturday over on Carrying Carpet Studios playing Cyberpunk. Woo! And then you can find me again here on Sunday. End of list. 
And now, for the ride or die viewers, it's vote time. Viewers, your votes to any player is worth one reroll of any ability score roll or any uh, move they make. And uh, players, your votes to each other are worth one XP each. You're muted. I, I was thinking. Um, <laughs> Big dad votes for Dwayne is what I yelled. Oh, yeah. Yay. Yeah, if uh, if you were playing again, I'd vote for you. But I died. <laughs> uh, for for Killed letting by me Amazon. fork you over. Um. Uh. Other than that, God, it's hard. Everyone does so beautifully. Ah. Uh, I shit. <laughs> um, damn it. This is really hard. So I'm okay. So uh, roll, a D, roll a D four. Okay. Where is it? Where is it? There's, there's I'm number people. one, two, three, and four. By the way. <laughs> So I, I am actually having a hard time debating between two people. Which I'm gonna get again. Safira and Billy, because I had some nice shit today. Mm. Yeah, how'd you know? And wait, okay, so if it's odd, uh, odds was gonna be Savannah, evens was gonna be Steve. That is a, I picked my hardest three dice, and I'm not wearing my glasses. You mean Safira, not Savannah? No, I said Savannah. I know, but why would you vote for me? Because that ending where you did, 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 did with the stabby and the stealing oh, of the fork. Yeah, you killed my friend. I take your face. <laughs> it, it, it was odd. So yes, you do in fact get my vote this evening. Um, everyone did so fucking amazing, and I, it's just hard to decide. So, but you got it for for. Um, just fork stealing? Yeah, I, I, I gave a fork and it... Ambos, go home, you're drunk. <laughs> give a fork, get a fork. Um <laughs> Wow. Uh, I can't stress enough how good everyone was tonight. Um might have been my favorite episode of Cult so far. Um and uh yeah, everyone was awesome, but uh in the sake of time, uh Rachel, emotional roller coaster, the whip flashing back and forth was great. Take the vote. Uh, but yeah, everyone was awesome. Uh, well, I did very much enjoy uh, Rachel's emo emotional roller coaster, both in and out of character. Uh, uh, my vote goes to Billy Wayne uh, for his amazing speech at the beginning of the session in his own personal purgatory. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really want to vote for Dwayne, because that was an amazing way to go out. <laughs> can, can I just vote for Dwayne? Can I vote for Dwayne? Because, like, I feel like your scene deserves a vote. I think we all simultaneously want to vote for Dwayne. I... But <laughs> he I, knows the love. You can give it to Dwayne, and then he can hand it to whoever he wants. Oh. Ooh! Oh! Wait! Okay. Then I then I retract my vote, and we should all <laughs> and we should all give our votes to Dwayne. Only Safira can do this because I hurt her real good. Yeah, yeah. I, I will I will give my vote to Dwayne because uh, yeah, that was a really great scene. What are you gonna do with it, Dwayne? Uh. Hmm. All right. Well, for can't point to yourself. What? Oh, I thought you pointed. I thought no, you. No, I said you no. had two points. You you oh. have two votes. This is what I was oh, saying. I have two, I'm, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm not pointing at myself. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah, then yeah, that makes it easy. So if I have two votes, then correct. Um, I am gonna reciprocate back to Safira for the emotional roller coaster and for beating me with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to frame this vote for beating me with the shovel. 
and then my second one is gonna go to Billy. So that actually worked out because I, I didn't I was on on teetering on both ends. Yes, I I love the purgatidal whatever that was. I can't think of the correct word, but yes. Yes. Per the hell, hell now ha hell now has a church. And it is run by Billy. <laughs> Ooh, new gold. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, that's where the money is, right? Right. <laughs> uh, so my vote is going to go to Rachel, specifically because of how dedicated you were to ignoring Randy uh, to the point where you drove your car over him. Like, I knew you were going to end up beating him with a shovel. Fucking harsh. But I was like, is the car going to happen? Is the car going to happen? <gasps> it's happening. I um, I cannot take full credit because I was getting prompts. Uh, but still, but I appreciate thank you. I appreciate Get my vote. Thank you. Group-wise, you all get three XP, except I'm awarding a bonus point to Benny for being Benny for two weeks and not getting to be themselves. I'm awarding a bonus point to Safira for all of the uh, being the bad guy, being forced to be the bad guy. And then an extra bonus point to Garnet and Safira because that antagonistic relationship must be emotionally draining. You both get an extra point for that. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm always down to be the bad guy. But thank you. Otherwise, excellent ping, excellent to each other, and we will see you all next week. Good night.